What's going on guys? Bengali here coming back at you with another video today, another draft video, and this is going to be the top five draft classes in the 2018 NFL draft by team. Now, I think for a lot of teams, this was a very solid, very productive draft. A lot of teams got better. I think there were very few teams that really had bad drafts, and for that reason, it was very hard to narrow this list down to five. Uh, I had a number of teams in here, the Jaguars, uh, the Raiders, the uh, Dolphins that just didn't make the cut. The Bears were another one. So all of those guys are not going to be on this list. I don't want to say too many team names to really spoil who this top five is going to be. We're going to start off with number five, though. And before we do, I want to say that um, a big thing for me in determining you know, who really had the best draft classes, it wasn't whether a team landed like two really solid players. It was teams that had great depth and great talent in the draft from taking multiple players of great value. So a team for me like the Jaguars just missed out on the on making the cut when they took Taven Bryan, DJ Chark, and Ronnie Harrison. Three really, really solid players. They just missed out because I think teams had, you know, maybe four solid players or five solid players. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the number five team, and that is going to be the Cleveland Browns. Their needs going into the draft, according to NFL.com, were cornerback, offensive line, quarterback, safety, and wide receiver, I think uh, that you could be even potentially add linebacker to that list. But we're going to go ahead and review the Cleveland Browns draft class. Round one, pick one, Baker Mayfield. Following that up with the four in Denzel Ward. Austin Corbett at the top of the second round. Nick Chubb also at the top of the second round before advancing to the third round where they took Chad Thomas, Antonio Callaway in the fourth they traded up to get, and the Gerard Avery, Damian Ratley, Simeon Thomas, in the final fifth and then two sixth round picks as well we're going to talk about baker mayfield near the top this is my number one quarterback uh in the 2018 nfl draft would eventually go number one overall to the cleveland browns and i think it was a phenomenal pick for them he is the best quarterback in the draft and they need a quarterback tyrod taylor is only going to be so good for so long and if he can groom baker mayfield to be a talented player you know just sit under tyrod for a year baker you're going to be good to go the browns are have given you an offensive line they are giving you weapons to work with at tight end. David Njoku in the draft last year, a healthy and out of trouble Josh Gordon. You draft Antonio Callaway, who we'll talk about in a bit. Baker Mayfield has all the tools and is ready to succeed whenever the Browns call his name and say, hey, you're playing this week, you're starting this week, whatever it may be. Round one, pick four. Denzel Ward, cornerback out of Ohio State to follow up the Oklahoma QB. Denzel Ward, to me, was the best cornerback in the draft. The Browns went out in free agency. They signed a cornerback or two. Uh, I believe they brought in TJ Carey and EJ Gaines from the Bills. I believe uh, they got those two. But they're saying, hey, this is one of the best players on our board, Denzel Ward. We value him over a Bradley Chubb because we already have Emmanuel Agba on that left edge. We don't really need an edge rusher. We're going to take Denzel Ward. We're going to improve that secondary as we've seen a lot of teams do in the NFL. And we're really going to solidify that piece of our defense, at least the cornerbacks. They've got them down pat now. Now it's really about improving at safety. You, you bring in uh, Demarius Randall. You traded for him. He's a player that can start at free safety. You already have some decent other safety options, maybe, uh, if Jabril Peppers can turn out to be good. I had him on my bus list last year. He certainly played like one uh, without any coaching, it seems, in his rookie campaign. But Denzel Ward at cornerback, I think, was a very good improvement. Austin Corbett at the top of the second round, guard out of Nevada. I think this is most likely going to be a tackle. Uh, Joe Batonio, ironically, was a tackle that now plays guard, both out of Nevada. And Austin Corbett is of similar size, a little bit slower. That's why I think he's going to slide over to tackle and start at left tackle. Joe Thomas retires. You need to get better on the offensive line uh, at that one tackle spot and maybe even the other on the right side as well. The interior is fine. Left guard. Joel Batonio, right guard, Kevin Zeitler, center, J.C. Treader. You were fine on the inside. It was all about getting a tackle, and I think they've done that with Austin Corbett. Round two, pick three, they took Nick Chubb, running back out of Georgia. Solid one-cut style running back, like Nick Chubb quite a bit. Uh, this was a really stacked running back class. I would have preferred Darius Geis to the Browns, but they do end up going with Nick Chubb, and he's going to complement that other set of running backs nicely. You look at Duke Johnson, really good change of pace back receiver out of the backfield essentially you bring in Carlos Hyde in free agency he's more of that pounder that thumper ground the rock pound the rock whatever you want to say he's more of that style of running back and then you have uh, Nick Chubb very good change of pace back 
probably will get a lot of carries here. He's a decent receiving back as well. He should be an impact player here, even in his first year with the Browns. As we go into Chad Thomas, defensive end out of Miami. This was a guy that was fairly disruptive at Miami, potentially could start on the edge for them. I think it was a little bit of a reach at this point. I probably wouldn't have taken Chad Thomas had I been picking for the Cleveland Browns uh, in round three, especially with some other edge rushers on the board. I would have preferred a little bit more to Chad Thomas, but Chad Thomas certainly isn't bad. He was on a pretty decent Miami defensive line last year. Um, so I think he is a good rotational edge rusher, which is how they're going to use him. Round four, pick five, you trade up for Antonio Callaway. In my opinion, the second best receiver in the class is a very good athlete, has all the tools, exceptional route runner with good hands. If he can stay out of trouble, he's going to be so, so good for the Cleveland Browns. With a, a clean Josh Gordon now, Josh Gordon, talk to Antonio Callaway. Say, hey, stay off the weed, da. All right? Is that a Stephen A. Smith impression? I didn't do it. It was ter- It would have been terrible. Um, Antonio Callaway is so talented. If he can stay out of trouble, he's going to be worth every bit of trading up into the fourth um, to go ahead and get him. Round five, pick 13. You take Gennard Avery out of Memphis. He's a pretty good athlete and a well-rounded tackler. Ran a 4-5-9 in the 40. I think this was good range for him. He's a good athlete. Uh, very, very strong, rangy linebacker. I think he's going to be a good special teamer and good rotational linebacker for the Cleveland Browns. Next up, you take Damian Ratley out of Texas A&M. Big, big playmaker at Texas A&M. I believe he averaged, uh, what was it? I think I heard 20 yards after the catch, or 20 yards per catch, I think it was. So even though he didn't get a lot of catches, he certainly made the most uh, of those opportunities and turned them into big gains. I think should be an impact player and special teams as a gunner as well, maybe even a return man. And then round six, pick 14, you take Simeon Thomas, a defensive back out of Louisiana. I don't know too much about this guy. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to bear with you. Um, and NFL.com does know a lot about him either. Didn't watch tape on him. Probably going to be, hopefully for them, either a practice squad player or impact player on special teams. But that was a very good class for the Cleveland Browns. I don't think it was the best as that is coming in at number five, but they added a lot of impact and a lot of depth at positions of need. Let's go ahead and move on to number four. Now with number four, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. And I think that first one with the Browns took a long time. And I want this video to not be super long for you guys. So we're going to kind of try and mow through these next couple of picks our next couple of teams. We're going to start off with Billy Price, center of Ohio State, at the uh, pretty much middle to end of the first round, Billy Price out of Ohio State. Jesse Bates in the second safety out of Wake Forest. And then Sam Hubbard and Malik Jefferson, back-to-back defensive end out of Ohio State, and linebacker out of Texas. And then Mark Walton, Devontae Harris, Andrew Brown, Darius Phillips, Logan Woodside, Rod Taylor, and then Auden Tate, receiver out of Florida State, with a compensatory pick in the seventh. I think all these picks, for the most part, are very, very good. You look at Mark Walton down to Rod Taylor. So that's Walton, Harris, Brown, Phillips, Woodside, Taylor. All good value picks and all good depth players. I wouldn't look for any of those to start. I did like Auden Tate quite a bit out of Florida State. He's a big bodied receiver that can be an impact player in the red zone. He's a red zone threat. He is gigantic. He is six foot five and a very talented jump ball receiver. He is huge. The fact that he fell all the way to the seventh round, I think is absolutely ridiculous and a fantastic value pick. Next, we're going to look at the top four, and I think the top four was among the best of any team in this draft. Billy Price to start it off at pick number 21. He can play center. He can play guard. Versatile, talented offensive lineman. Should start in immediately for the Cleveland Browns. Talented player. Like what the Bengals are doing. I think I said Cleveland Browns. I meant Cincinnati Bengals. It's a CB that's screwing me up. Jesse Bates in the second round. Safety out of Wake Forest. Very, very rangy player. Very talented as well. He is a ball hawk and a very good zone safety. Liked him quite a bit. He's a playmaker. He gets the job done at safety for you. Next up, Sam Hubbard and Malik Jefferson. Sam Hubbard, I had in the late first round in my mock draft. He falls all the way to the third. The Bengals scoop him up, and this could be another fantastic value pick as they had Carl Lawson last year. Now Sam Hubbard could do very similar things for you you know, in terms of where he's drafted and how he's going to impact the team. Like Sam Hubbard quite a bit. Bengals having a stellar draft. And then they go with Malik Jefferson, linebacker out of Texas. Could have been a first round pick. Apparently there are, you know, concerns about how much he loves to play football and things of that nature. But he is an extreme athlete. 
that got better every year at Texas. It was a five-star recruit, I remember, that did not play very well to start it off. But he got better every year when the system switched from, you know, more of a zone cover scheme at Texas to an attacking man style of defense. Malik Jefferson was insane in that Texas defense in the middle, just showing off that athleticism. Could play outside linebacker, could go after the quarterback as an edge rusher. Really like Malik Jefferson, could be an incredible player, and that is a fantastic draft class from the Bengals as well, getting a lot better in my opinion. At number three, I have the Baltimore Ravens. I think they had certainly a solid draft. We're going to talk about the top four, top five picks maybe a little bit. I think they also had good value with Jaleel Scott and Jordan Lasley in the fourth. And then insane value with Deshaun Elliott in the sixth, a player that I like quite a bit. There is potential Texas bias there, but his tape was very solid uh, in my opinion. Deshaun Elliott is certainly going to be an impact player on special teams. I think will compete eventually for a starting spot in this Baltimore Ravens secondary. They also took Greg Sinat later, Bradley Bozeman, and uh, Zach Slayler or Sealer uh, out of Ferris State. I don't know much about him. A lot of these players are just going to be good depth. Kenny Young out of UCLA. Good depth, a linebacker could potentially compete for a starting spot. Anthony Averett out of Alabama is a good cornerback. I think he fits exactly what the Ravens want to do. Uh, similar style, play with Marlon Humphrey at Alabama. Maybe they like that uh, sort of combination. They took Hayden Hurst at pick 25. Top tight end in the draft out of South Carolina. Is a little bit older. Certainly helps out that tight end spot. And then they take Mark Andrews in the third tight end out of Oklahoma. They double up on tight ends and they get, in my opinion, the top two tight ends in the draft. Those were the top two tight ends with the best tape and Mark Andrews as an H-back type of player potentially can go in line. You have a very solid combination with Hayden Hurst, who is a more pure tight end. Really, really nice. And then in the third round, prior to that pick, you got Orlando Brown out of Oklahoma. Had the best tape of any offensive tackle in the draft, in my opinion. I'm going to keep throwing that out because these are my opinions. A lot of people don't uh, necessarily have the same one. And then he tested very, very poorly at the combine and at his pro day. But it's all about the tape for me. And at right tackle, that athleticism is not going to matter as much with Ronnie Stanley on that blind side at the left tackle spot. Orlando Brown can play right tackle and be an impact player immediately for the Baltimore Ravens to help protect Joe Flacco. And then prior to that, you had the Baltimore Ravens trading back into the first round to take Lamar Jackson, quarterback out of Louisville. Super talented player, has a sky high ceiling, great potential on him. Eventually will be the successor of Joe Flacco, it looks like. Lamar Jackson could be a huge player for the Baltimore Ravens. At number two, we're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Start off with Leighton Vander Esch in the first, Connor Williams in the second, Michael Gallup in the third, Dorrance Armstrong Jr. in the fourth, before taking Dalton Schultz also in the fourth, Mike White, quarterback out of Western Kentucky in the fifth, as a good backup, Chris Covington, outside linebacker, Indiana, and then Cedric Wilson in the sixth as well, and Bo Scarborough in the seventh. We're going to talk about a couple of these guys. First, starting out with the wide receivers, Michael Gallup out of Colorado State in the third, and Cedric Wilson out of Boise State in the sixth. Those are two receivers I liked quite a bit. Michael Gallup, I think, is a bit better than Cedric Wilson. His draft stock shows that. I think Michael Gallup could have been a second-round pick. I think Cedric Wilson could have been a third or a fourth-round pick. This was a deep wide receiver class, and those are two very talented wide receivers. Bo Scarborough in the seventh is at least a very, very solid seventh-round pick and a good bruising back change of pace potentially uh, with Ezekiel Elliott for the Dallas Cowboys. Fantastic value there near the end of the draft. Dorrance Armstrong Jr. was dominant two years ago at Kansas before getting double teamed nearly every single play in his last season at Kansas because he's the only good player on that entire defense. But he is a very good potential impact player for the Dallas Cowboys. Like him more as a 3-4 outside linebacker. Doesn't maybe fit the 4-3 as well. But we'll see what he ends up doing with the Dallas Cowboys. Connor Williams in the second round, could play guard, could play tackle. We'll see what L. Collins ends up doing. Connor Williams was one of the best offensive linemen in this class. Very good value pick for the Cowboys there in the middle of the second round. And then Leighton Vander Esch in the first, pick number 19. Very solid linebacker out of Boise State. Good athleticism, good range, and he is a thumper and a bruiser on tape. No college interceptions, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, but... He's a player that goes sideline to sideline, very good in between the tackles, good at making tackles and being that secure middle linebacker in the middle of the field. I think that's a very solid pick for the Dallas Cowboys in terms of the value that he brings to your defense. 
Maybe they would have been better off with an edge rusher. They got one in the fourth round that I think has very good value as well. Cowboys did amazingly in this draft. And now for those who know me on this channel, you know I'm a Giants fan. You're thinking there has to be bias here with you going with the Giants as your number one draft class of 2018. But I can assure you this, there's not. If any other team had this draft class and had drafted these six players, I would be saying this is the best draft class of any team in the 2018 NFL draft. It happens to be my favorite team for the first time ever. The Giants have done this for me with the new GM and Dave Gettleman over the old trash that was Jerry Reese. First, they start off with the best player in the entire draft in Saquon Barkley running back at a Penn State before going into the second top of the second to take Will Hernandez guard out of UTEP that easily could have gone in the first round, pick 20, somewhere in that range. He is a very, very good interior offensive lineman, will be a beast at left guard if the Giants choose to play him there. He is a monster and a mauler before taking Lorenzo Carter in the third round, edge out of Georgia, could play 4-3 linebacker for a team. I think with the Giants, he's going to be more of that 3-4 outside linebacker now that they're changing uh, to that system. Very, very solid player. Could have gone in the second as well. Did you look at Saquon Barkley? Best player in the draft. Took him at number two. That, you know, kind of equates. Will Hernandez in the second round. Could have gone in the first round. Insane value. Lorenzo Carter at the top of the third. Could have been a second round pick. BJ Hill in the third. Could have been a second round pick. I had him graded a little bit lower than that. I think this was a little bit of reach in terms of on my board. Just because Maurice Hurst was there. I think BJ Hill is going to fit the system a little bit better. This was in the trade. Um for uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, in case you were curious on that. But B.J. Hill is going to offer great value for the Giants. Could start even at 3-4 defensive end. I think Josh Morrow, when he comes back from suspension, is going to have that spot, though. But B.J. Hill at 3-4 D end could be the fit there for the Giants starting in the third round before taking Kyle Laletta QB out of Richmond in the fourth. This was a sleeper quarterback, and the Giants ended up taking a very talented one, Kyle Laletta out of Richmond, this is a guy who had great tape and great potential. I thought he would go to the Patriots. He just felt like a Patriots style of QB. He falls to the fourth round. The Giants scoop him up, and it was a very, very good draft pick. At the very least, he's going to compete for a backup spot uh, with Davis Webb. And could it be the eventual successor to Eli Manning as a fourth round pick? And then they took uh, RJ McIntosh in the fifth round defensive tackle out of Miami. Was disruptive on that defensive line. Uh, could have gone earlier, could have gone in the fourth, uh, but he does end up going in the fifth. R.J. McIntosh, another defensive lineman, another potential 3-4 defensive end, and probably going to be a backup, probably going to be a death player, but not a bad pick by any means. Giants, to me, had the best draft class. Who do you guys think had the best draft class? Let me know down in the comments section below, but thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. This shit don't run well.